Hello and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. Today we'll read Philippians 3 verses 14 to 18 from the Christian Standard Bible. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. For I've often told you and now say again with tears that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. As I mentioned in my previous devotionals, Paul has an amazing goal to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection, and to know the fellowship of his sufferings. He pursues the goal of forgetting what is behind in his previous life as an enemy of Christ, and he reaches forward to what is ahead in his current life with Christ and putting off all that is part of his old fleshly nature and putting on Christ's nature. Not only this, but he encourages his readers, including us, to join him to have this goal and to make this journey. We who are followers of Christ should think this way. Now, I want to explain the Philippian background a bit more. Paul was talking about his goal and his journey towards knowing Christ and becoming more like him, even though he admits in verse 13 that he still hasn't attained it. He discusses this idea of attaining perfect unity with Christ and yet not attaining it because there are, were some in the Philippian church who thought that spiritual perfection could be attained while they are in this present world. Paul is stating to them that he has this as his goal, and yet he hasn't achieved it, even though he presses on to put his old simple nature behind him and focuses on Christ and his kingdom. He is telling them that no one can be spiritually perfect while living in this present world because we will always battle against temptation, and we won't be able to completely resist temptation in every situation until we are with Christ. He states in verse 15 that those who are spiritually mature should think as Paul thinks. Then he tells them that if anyone disagrees with Paul and thinks that he or she can reach spiritual perfection while living in this present world, God will reveal this to them. God will bring them into a situation where they will face a temptation or a difficulty that they will have to rely on the Holy Spirit to bring them through it. And if they don't rely on the Holy Spirit, they will fall into sin and they will realize that they need to rely on God's presence and power to help them each and every minute of every day so that they can grow in their spiritual life. Of course, with the irresistible pull of our old sinful desires and Satan's ability to deceive us and lead us astray, those who don't agree with Paul will soon realize that Paul is correct. And even though they strive for it, they won't completely attain perfection until they meet Christ through death or at his second coming. Paul concludes this discussion on progressive sanctification by telling his readers that they should follow his example. And this may seem egotistical on his part, but Paul states in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Paul had Christ as his only example, and his readers should be confident that if they followed Paul, they were following Christ. We have the New Testament that has been handed down to us by early Christians, and it contains the teaching of Christ, the teaching of Paul, and the teaching of other apostles. All the teaching that is contained in the New Testament is foundationally the teaching of Christ. So we should be students of the Bible and follow closely the teaching found in it. Of course, it goes without saying that we should also be students of the Old Testament because the teaching in it points to Christ, and we see as we read it that everything written in it is fulfilled in Christ. I will end by looking at verse 18, and I will visit this verse and the preceding verses more fully in my next devotional. But I want to remind you that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. We live in a world that is completely opposed to the teaching of Christ and completely opposed to Christ's redemption on the cross. We as followers of Christ are not following a new fad or joining an interesting religious club. We have joined forces with the God of the universe 
And in so doing, we have made ourselves enemies of those around us. This knowledge should first drive us to spend more time in the word of God so that we can stand against the enemy's spiritual attacks against us. And this knowledge should, second, drive us to pray for those around us so that God will open their eyes to the truth of the gospel. And finally, this knowledge should drive us to share the gospel with everyone that we meet and pray that our testimony, along with the work of God's Spirit, will bring those we share with to repentance and a desire to follow Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, I pray that we might press on to know Christ more, and that we might press on to put aside, put behind us all of our old sinful habits, Lord God, and to know Christ and to follow him and follow his desires for us. And I pray, Lord God, that we might be students of the, the, the whole Bible, Lord God, the Old Testament, which points us to Christ, and the New Testament, which gives us the teachings of Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that through as we become students of the Bible and, and following the teachings of the Bible, that we might be able to resist the powers of the evil one and to follow you more closely, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that we might pray for those around us, that you might open their eyes, that they might decide to follow you and turn away from this world of destruction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.